Hey everyone, welcome back. In this example, we're gonna use right triangle trigonometry to help us figure out how tall a tree is, although this process could be mimicked for any object like a mountain far off in the distance or a skyscraper, whatever you're interested in finding the height of. All right, so we are told a tree casts a shadow that's 532 feet long. And so we want to find the height of the tree if we know or we can measure that the angle of elevation of the sun is about 25.7 degrees. So it may not be immediately obvious to us what we need to do to figure out the height of this tree, but we are given some information. And so let's maybe go ahead and try to draw a picture to see if that helps us organize our information and what to do next. All right, so here we have a tree. I could add some leaves and branches to it, but I think this serves the purpose. And the idea is this tree is casting a shadow and the shadow is created by the tree blocking the sun. This is uh, reaching the limits of my artistic ability. It's supposed to be yellow, but it looks exactly like the green. All right, so we've got the sun casting a bunch of light. That light hits the tree, it gets blocked, and that creates a shadow, right? We're assuming the tree is standing perfectly vertical up. It's not tilted to the side or twisty or anything like that. Very, uh, very simple scenario here. And so what we know is, well, the length of the shadow, which is going to be like the base length of this right triangle that we just drew, is 532 feet long. We're told that the angle of elevation of the sun, that is the angle between the ground and the sun, which is made by the top of the tree up there, we're told that this angle is about 25.7 degrees. And so what we're trying to figure out here is the height of the tree. We don't know that. Let's go ahead and give it a variable name like y, right? y is often used to measure vertical distances like heights. All right, so this is all the information we're given and we're trying to find y inside this right triangle. And well, sometimes we can find side lengths of right triangles using the Pythagorean theorem. But if we want to use the Pythagorean theorem to find a side length, we have to know at least two of the side lengths of our right triangle. And unfortunately, we only know one side length, right? We do not know the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So the Pythagorean theorem will not be able to save us here. So what else do we know? Well, we know our trig functions, right? Easy way to remember them is so katoa. Let's see. Can any of these trig functions help us in this problem? Well, let's go ahead and maybe try to recategorize or label our information. So 25.7 degrees is our angle of interest. Maybe that's like the angle that we would plug into one of our trig functions. Let's see, with respect to our angle, uh, 532 is the side that is adjacent to our angle, right? Our other unknown side, the one we're not as interested in, is the hypotenuse. And the side length that we really want to find out that represents the height of our triangle and the height of our tree is the opposite side to our angle of 25.7 degrees. All right, so now that we've relabeled our information with respect to our angle of interest, right, we have an angle of 25.7 degrees. We have this known side length of 532 feet that is like our adjacent side length with respect to our angle of 25.7 degrees. And the other side length that we wanna know that we don't know yet is why the opposite side length of our angle. So which one of our trig functions or ratios deals with opposite side lengths and adjacent side lengths? Well, that's gonna be our tangent function or ratio or technically our cotangent function or ratio, but we pretty much always prefer tangent over cotangent if we can make that choice. So. What we have to remember here is that tangent of our angle theta is always the opposite side length with respect to our angle theta divided by the adjacent side length. All right, so let's go ahead and see what we have here. What do we know that we can plug into this equation and what don't we know? And will we have enough information to solve for that thing that we do not know? All right, so we know our angle theta is 25.7 degrees. So we can rewrite the left-hand side as tangent of 25.7 degrees. So we can get the value of tangent of 25.7 degrees out of a calculator. But we can also get the value of tangent using our ratio. It's the opposite side length divided by the adjacent side length. So the opposite side length is our unknown value of y, and the adjacent side length is 532. 
We have not yet evaluated tangent of 25.7 degrees, but once we do do that using a calculator, it's just going to give us a number. So we have some number is equal to y divided by 532. It's actually not too hard to solve this equation for y. Just clear that denominator, multiply both sides by 532, and we see that an exact value for y is 532 times tangent of 25.7 degrees. However, if someone was paying you to measure this tree and they asked you, hey, you finished the job, how tall is the tree? And you would respond to them, oh, the tree is about 532 times tangent of 25.7 degrees feet tall. They'd probably ask for their money back or just not pay you at all. So it'd be more useful to give like the decimal approximation of this. And if we input 532 times tangent of 25.7 into our calculator, the value that we should get is approximately 256 feet. I think this is a really cool example that really shows the power of trigonometry and is really an ancient technique that has been used by people um, throughout time. Right? Ever since trigonometry has been known, people have been able to measure things like tall trees or faraway mountains just by taking a couple of quick measurements like the distance between the object and how the angle changes as you uh, take some measurements. Of course, there does come the, uh, the idea of how, do, how did ancient people evaluate something like tangent of 25.7 degrees without a calculator. That's a, that's a topic for another video altogether. The idea and the takeaway from an example like this is sometimes we cannot solve a right triangle or find all of its side lengths using the Pythagorean theorem. It just depends on what information we are given. So if we aren't given enough information to find a side length using the Pythagorean theorem, we might try to use right triangle trigonometry instead, especially if one of our pieces of information is a non-right angle.